In the last video, I showed the result of some experiments to create a human non-player character in Unity controlled using a neural network that was created using the ML Agents Toolkit. The human tries to catch a runaway dog. In this video, let's talk about three different approaches that could have been taken and which one I chose. I would also like to mention that this channel has reached 500 subscribers. Thanks to all of you who are interested in these videos. I've been making videos kind of sporadically, but will try to make them more regularly going forward. If you aren't familiar with Deep Reinforcement Learning or the Unity ML Agents Toolkit, please check out my earlier videos. I will make more videos to explain how the example was made in detail and trade-offs involved. Please subscribe to this channel if you would like to follow along. I have not been able to find any documentation or prior work in using reinforcement learning to control humanoid characters so that the characters behave in a realistic way and look realistic doing it. In that sense, this video may be exploring something new. If any of you know any prior work on this, please let me know in the comments. Recalling this diagram from my earlier videos, for deep reinforcement learning to control a humanoid character, the character needs sensory information from the environment. The character uses that to decide what to do next, and that decision executes by controlling some parameters. But what should those parameters be? There are different options at different levels. Let's think a bit abstractly about how you or I make decisions. Let's take a simple example. Suppose I've lost my keys and my goal is to find them. The keys are somewhere in my immediate environment, so maybe they are in this room or a different nearby room. How do I look for my keys? This may be overly simplistic, but we all have different levels to our brains. I can think of at least three different strategies to look for my keys using different brain levels. This slide shows three different approaches we can take that correspond to what I am calling the high-level, mid-level, or low-level brain. In the high-level brain approach, we train the humanoid to use knowledge of the environment either by having learned it already or by quickly assimilating what can be seen, heard, and detected by any senses. We want the humanoid to answer the high-level question of where the keys are likely to be. In Unity, working at the high-level brain may mean focusing on what our next destination to search should be. In the mid-level brain approach, we train the humanoid to move through the environment looking for the keys without assuming any pre-knowledge of the environment. If possible, the humanoid may try to keep track of what areas have already been searched and search in new areas. This is a bit like an automated vacuum cleaner that should cover an entire room. In Unity, we are focusing at the level of the animation motion parameters. In the low-level brain approach, we train the humanoid to move its knees, hips, ankles, and other body joints to achieve forward motion. Essentially, we are teaching the humanoid to walk so that the environment can be searched. This is below the level of conscious thought and can be called the reptilian brain. In Unity, we are training the humanoid to learn the detailed geometric transformations to perform at each body joint. In earlier videos, I've shown how Unity provides a rich humanoid animation capability with very realistic looking animations, including walking, running, and any movement for which we have an animation clip. Unity also has a built-in navigation system that enables human agents to move through the environment, avoiding obstacles and generally getting around in a realistic looking way. So another way to think about the control parameters is to determine how much we leverage Unity's built-in capabilities 
versus how much we rely on a neural network to control aspects of the agent's behavior. In the low-level brain approach, the neural network should control the geometric transformation of each joint of the humanoid agent's body, meaning the bends of the elbows, knees, ankles, shoulders, and everything else. This would be instead of leveraging Unity's animation system. This would amount to using reinforcement learning to teach the humanoid agent how to walk. Frankly, I think this approach makes no sense because reinforcement learning is not the right approach to learn how a humanoid body should move in a realistic way. Examples of bodies that have been trained to move via reinforcement learning tend to look quite unrealistic because they don't take physics into account. The ML Agents Toolkit includes this example called Walker, which combines reinforcement learning with some physics. For example, the limbs all have mass. I give the Unity engineers credit for coming up with this as an example. It's interesting to see how it's implemented, but clearly the motion does not look like natural humanoid walking. We want our human character to have natural looking movement. The easiest way to do that is by using Unity's Mechanim Animation System and Motion Captured Animation Clips, as I've shown in previous videos. If we wanted a human model to learn to move in a natural way without motion captured animation, a neural net alone would not be the right approach. We would need to take the laws of physics into account. An example where this was done very thoroughly is this company, Deep Motion, and their Motion Brain technology, which combines physics with AI to create very natural human movement without motion capture. And in fact, these human models have almost supernatural balancing ability, allowing them to do tricks that would require an Olympic athlete in the real world. Perhaps this technology could be combined with Unity, but ML Agents is not used here. Deep Motion has further extended their technology to generate motion capture animation clips from video, and perhaps those are compatible with Unity, but that would use Unity's animation system rather than joint movements learned through reinforcement learning. For sure, we need to use Unity's built-in humanoid animation capabilities rather than expecting a neural network to learn how the body should move. So we eliminate the low-level brain approach. In the middle-level brain approach, we leverage Unity's humanoid animation and have the neural network control the animation controller's parameters. This is, in fact, the approach I took in the example. This approach does work, although the humanoid agent makes some quickly changing decisions which results in jerky, unrealistic movement. The parameters controlled by the neural network are things like whether the humanoid agent should stand in place, do a fast walk, or turn in place to the right or left. An experiment that I would like to run next is how the result would change if we allow the humanoid agent to make a decision, say, once per second, so that we don't get the abrupt jerky motion changes. I think that may smooth out the motion, but we need to see whether the agent can still learn to accomplish its goal, which in this case was finding the dog. The remaining approach would be what I am calling the high-level brain, which means leverage not only Unity's built-in humanoid animation system, but also its navigation system. Rather than having the neural net control animation parameters, the neural net can set the next destination for the agent to move to. Unity's navigation system would get the agent there, avoiding obstacles and moving smoothly. We would be leveraging more of Unity's built-in capabilities, and the motion would be smooth in this case. There are a couple of complications, though. How does the agent choose a valid destination? To be realistic, I think this should be based on the agent's senses. Perhaps the agent needs to choose a destination that it can see. Another complication is that a lot can change while the agent moves to its destination. 
What if the dog abruptly changes its direction, but it would take the agent another five seconds to reach its destination? There probably needs to be a way for the agent to interrupt what it is doing and make a different decision. I think the high-level brain approach may work best, but also be the most difficult to implement. So having eliminated the low-level brain approach, the other two both seem like they might be reasonable. As I said, I have the mid-level brain approach working fairly well in terms of the human agent finding the dog, but not so well in terms of having realistic looking movement. The high level brain approach may be better if we can figure out all the nuances to getting it implemented. In the next videos, I will show the details on how I built the example. After that, I will try some more experiments towards improving the approach to something that I hope will generalize to more different goals, even beyond catching a runaway dog. Maybe we need to escape from a monster stop a killer robot, or rescue someone from a burning building. My hope is that we find a good approach that generalizes to any of these and prove that with experiments and examples. If you are interested, please like this video and subscribe to see the next ones. We may be exploring something novel in terms of unity and deep learning, so if you have ideas, please do leave comments and let's have a community discussion.